In the near future, a crusade will be conducted in your area in which will be shared the most exciting and profitable discovery I have ever made. It is simply this, that eternal life is not a reward, but a gift. You see, I was a victim of a tragic and widespread misconception. The misconception that eternal life was a reward earned from God by a life well lived. Now, I'm not sure just how I thought God graded. Perhaps 70 or above you passed, and below 70 you failed. Or perhaps God graded on the curve. If you're as good as a Jones as you pass, and if not, you fail. Whether one of these systems of grading was God's way or not, I wasn't sure. Perhaps he just kept a ledger with good and bad columns so that when we committed a good act, he recorded it, and when we committed an evil act, he recorded that. Then one day, when each of us stood before God, he would count the good and the evil, and should the good outnumber the evil, he would simply say, enter ye in, rewarding us with heaven. Should the evil outnumber the good, he would reward us with hell, saying, depart from me. Whichever the system, I was sure I could not know my final fate and destiny until my life was completed, the ledger balanced, and the result announced. Thus, the only course left to me was to do my best and hope for a happy ending. Now, you must admit, this is a rather nervous stance to take toward one's eternal welfare, but it was the only course I could figure. Then one day, a startling truth came to me. I was confronted by a verse of Scripture, 1 John 5, 13, which told me that the Bible had been written for the express purpose that people might know that they have eternal life. The verse said, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Here was this verse staring me in the face, telling me that a man could know that he has eternal life. I knew I didn't know, and I didn't think anyone could know. How could a man possibly know that he has eternal life if it is a reward to be determined at the end of his life? Undoubtedly, I'd been mistaken about it being a reward at the end if it can be known in root. Then came the great discovery. Eternal life is not a reward, but a gift. It is not earned through life, but received in life. There it was in Romans 6.23. The gift of God, the gift of God, G-I-F-T, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And again in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So there it was, as big as life. Of course a man can know that he has eternal life because it is a gift which God wants to give him now. If I said to you, I'll see you again in 24 hours. If you're a very nice person between now and then, I will reward you with this Bible I hold in my hand. Suppose a friend turns to you and says, are you going to get his Bible? You would have to reply, I don't know. I'll know tomorrow at this time. I'll know in 24 hours. That is because it would be a reward for good behavior during the next 24 hours. And you could know only at the end of that time. Now, that's the way it is with a reward. On the other hand, if I say here, I would like to give you my Bible as a gift. Should you reach out and accept it and your friend ask, is that yours? You would simply say, yes, it was given to me. That is the difference between a reward and a gift. When I made the wonderful discovery that the Bible was written to show me that eternal life was God's gift to me through Christ and that he wanted me to receive the gift and to know that I had it, I could do nothing less. I received Christ and his wonderful gift. Since that time, I have had very little desire to do anything but share this discovery with others. And what a privilege to share it with you now. Perhaps you're wondering how you might receive the gift and rejoice in the knowledge that you have eternal life. Here is God's answer to your question, how? First, although it may be difficult to agree with God's description of you in Romans 3.23, where he says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I certainly know enough about myself to agree that I have sinned. Will you agree that God is right about you? Next, realize that sin separates you from a holy God and makes you dead to him, as he declares in Romans 6.23 where he says the wages of sin is death. I know that as far back as I can remember, every time I did something wrong, I felt dead inside. Didn't you? Haven't you? This is only symptomatic of what is actually happening. Sin deadens us and separates us from God, who is holy. 
In eternity, this separation culminates in what the Bible calls the second death, or hell. Thirdly, recognize that God, in his great love, has made provision for you in his Son, Jesus Christ. He declares in Romans 5, 8, God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How wonderful, and what a startling fact that God the Son should die for someone like me and like you. We certainly don't deserve it, and we're really not worth it. But he loved us and preferred to save us than himself. Dying for our sins on the old rugged cross, Jesus paid a debt he did not owe. We owe a debt we haven't paid. He has a plus one. We have a minus one. If we can get his plus and our minus together, we have a balanced equation. So simply at last, although Jesus died for all, it is in vain until each one of us receives him personally into our hearts and our lives as Savior and Lord. Then our debt of sin is marked, paid in full, and the equation is balanced. Then Jesus comes into our life to live, to live in and through us a new and supernatural life, and to give us his gift of eternal life. As many as received Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, says John 1, 12. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, says Romans 10, 13. Will you receive Jesus Christ now and in him have God's gift of eternal life? May I have the privilege of praying for you and with you in our closing moment together? Father, I pray that this precious person whom you love and for whom Christ died and who has listened so attentively to your message may now, if never before, receive by faith your Son, Jesus, as Savior and Lord, and know from this day on the joy of having the gift of eternal life. While our heads are bowed in prayer, would you pray with me from your heart these words? Lord Jesus, you're right about me. I am a sinner, and I know my sin separates me from God. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. I don't deserve it, but I do appreciate it. With all my heart, best I know how, I open my life to you and invite you to be the Savior of my soul and the Lord of my life. From this day on, I am yours, and I'll not be ashamed. Amen. I know you've heard how Jesus died on the cross, but have you really thought about it? Have you really thought about what hell is going to be? You see, I'm praying that you will take each one of these songs directly to your heart. Ask yourself, do you want to go to heaven or to hell? 